Hey everyone, it's Kat. So for this video, we're going to talk about crafting. Now I'm going to cover uh, the basics of crafting, kind of um, how to get started, where to go to get started. If you're someone that has already been crafting for a little while and you kind of already know a little bit about it, you've already started it along your crafting lines, uh, you might want to skip to a little bit later in the video. I'm going to talk about things like uh, crafting AAs, trade skill AAs, and more advanced items like that. Um, but the stuff I'm going to talk about is going to work for both the live servers and the TLE servers. Um, on TLE, even though everybody starts on the boat, um, it is possible to head to Darklight Woods, um, New Halas, do the, do the crafting lines there which I think is really the best place to start. Um, so I actually rolled a few new tunes just so I could do those and show you guys where to pick them up and how to do it. So let's get started. To start the initial crafting line here, what you want to do is you'll see I'm in Hates Envy and this is pretty much where you zone in right away when you create a new tune. Um, but you'll notice that right over here, there's an Arisai with a feather. And if you talk to him, he gives you a little uh, spiel. And he asks you if you have questions about things like harvesting or collections. Um, so when you get through his quest, he's going to give you this learning to harvest. As, as your first quest and you'll get this storage box that you can put in your bank um, or in your house vault and it's a very large box um, it's 36 and but it's only for harvestables so only for your harvest but accept this and then what we'll do is we'll go out and do some harvesting and collect those items that he's asking about. And then we'll return to him when we're all set and done. Okay, so I've almost finished the harvesting for this part of the learning to harvest tutorial. Now, I still need sunfish, so for a lot of the new players, they're not really sure how to fish. Um, it's really uh, not that confusing. You don't need anything special to do it. It's just like harvesting anything else. So in Dark Lake Woods, uh, you just come down here to the river. And there is a long river that runs across the zone. has a lot of branches. But what you'll want to do is come here. Come up to the very edge of the river. And you'll see as I get close, the names start popping up. It says Searing Trout. So it lets me know that there is fish in here, and if you'll watch if I move my mouse over those areas, the little hand pops up like it's going to be able to grab something, so it means I can start harvesting. So all I need to do is click there, and you'll see she pulls out her little fishing pole. Now her harvesting skills, her fishing skills are going to be very low, so you are going to have to click this a whole bunch to get it to go finally. And it finally did catch something. Unfortunately, it was frog legs. So it's one of two things that you can get from this node. is either going to be frog legs or the sunfish. And of course, we want the sunfish to complete this quest. And there we go. I caught two sunfish. So I need one more. And that will complete the harvest. And I can go back to that Arisai. And collect my rewards. And there we go. So, all finished. I'm going to head back to Hate Envy. So, once you finish doing the harvest, come back here to Hate Envy, and you'll notice that the trainer, Zektar, has the book overhead for you now. So, once you talk to him and you complete the quest, you'll notice that the mender over here now has a feather over his head. So, let's talk to him. 
says, greetings, I notice you harvesting out there. Are you interested in trying your hand at making something out of them? So this is going to be your first crafting quest, and this is going to be the introduction to crafting. So let's say, sure, why not? And Brie's going to talk to us about what we need to do. Okay, so he's going to give us this quest called If I Had a Hammer. And what he's asking us to do is to pick up these two items. There's a bag of coal here right next to the anvil. And there is a piece of paper over here on the box. And this is going to be the recipe. So what I want to do is open up my bags and right click and scribe that. And it's going to give me the recipe for a wolf paw. And his coal here is of course going to be your fuel. So I always pick up two. Um, this wolf paw that you make with this quest is actually a charm. And you can make two of them since you have two charm spots. So when I'm doing this um, on my actual tunes, I, I usually just make two. Plus it gives you a little bit more XP. So, And this is uh, very easy. And you actually uh, don't need to worry about the counters down here is that won't become a thing until you go into the actual crafting areas in Nariac or New Hallis and they talk to you a little bit about them. Okay, so I finished that and then I can talk to him again and it says yes I did make the wolf's paw. He says congratulations and he of course gives you the message that you know, if you head to Nariag, seek out this person in the crafting area and they can help you get started on a crafting profession. So that's what we're going to do, is we will head down to Nariag and get started over there. Okay, so I have made my way into the crafting area in Nariag, the tunnels underneath the banking area by the World Bell. So I come down here and of course you get the little book marking that this person needs to see you for Sinjin's Exventor, the trade skill tutorial. So we'll talk to him. And as you can see, I've already <laughs> leveled up quite a bit. I, I do have uh, a buff on that does give me some extra XP here and uh, it does count for trade skill. Uh, but that should still give you uh, a few levels as well. So I'm going to accept his gift. And yes, I would like to learn a crafting profession. So he's going to ask me, do I have these things? And I should because we were out harvesting earlier. Um, if you don't, um, you can say I'll take it later. But of course, you can always take the quest now and just not finish it right away. But he is giving you fair warning. You are going to need to have... Uh, crafting materials and harvest. So he's talking now and he's going to explain a little bit about the different trade skill professions. So uh, there are three different main crafting professions that you can choose and then in those there are three separate ones. And he's explaining how to actually do the crafting and how to deal with counters. Okay, and he's actually going to provide me, at least with the first several quests he does, eventually you will need to buy your own to finish this quest line, with basic coal as well as the recipes to do the, 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 the combines that he's asking for. So I will accept that. I will scribe it. And once I get to the point where I need more fuel, the wholesaler right here, she actually sells coal. So I can get some from her as well. And then this is our crafting trainer who sells recipes. So I will come down. He wants me to create a simple candelabra, so that will require a forge. So simple candelabra, so I will go to create it, and all I have to do is begin. And what you'll notice is these numbers along the bottom, 1 through 3, 4 through 6. So this green bar right here, this is your durability, those correspond to the first 1, 2, 3. 
your blue bar, which is your progress bar, your state bar, is 4, 5, and 6. So what you do is if you notice your green bar is dipping down, um, you can hit 1, 2, 3. You can wait for a counter, but hit 1, 2, 3. If it's your blue bar that's slow and maybe you just want it to go faster, 4, 5, and 6 will do that. You see that first one was pretty easy. I didn't even need to do any counters. I could just let it go. If I had wanted to make it go faster, I could have hit 4, 5, 6. Um, usually at this point, you're so low, you don't have a lot of skills. Um, sometimes you can make it worse by trying to make it go faster and drop down your durability. So I will return to him and turn in my candelabra and I level up. So, and he'll have a few other uh, of these quests for me, you know, make one of these, make one or two of these different things, um, and we'll continue on like this um, until I get to level 9, in which case I will have to make some decisions. Alright, so at level 9, now I need to make some choices. I'm going to come back and talk to my crafting trainer. And I'm going to need to give her my name. And I'm going to have to select the profession. So am I going to be a craftsman? Am I going to be an outfitter or a scholar? So we talked the, about this a little bit in my last video when we were looking at, you know, what professions make the most plat. So, I argued, you know, it all kind of works out in the end. Um, you're better off picking something that's going to be most useful to your to your uh, adventure class and support yourself that way. But um, at this point, um, all we really need to do is to narrow down our choice a bit. So, do I want to be someone um, that makes either decorative items? Do I want to make my own food? Do I want to make my own arrows or ammo? In that case, I'm going to go want to go with craftsman for now. If I want to be someone that makes my own uh, gear like armor or cloth, I'm going to have to choose outfitter. And if I want to make my own spells, I'll pick scholar. So uh, this tune's a wizard. I think I want to make her spells. So I'm going to go with scholar for now. And then what will happen again is in another 10 levels. When I get to level 19, I'm going to have to narrow that down further. I'm going to actually have to decide whether she wants to be an alchemist, a jeweler, or a sage. Now for wizards, that would be sage, right? Sages make all the spells for mages and priests. Jewelers make spells for scouts and, of course, jewelry. And alchemists make uh, spells for fighters and, of course, potions. Um, but I'll have to come back at level 19 and I won't be able to go past 19 till I make that decision and once I do I'll get automatically boosted to to level 20 just like she just automatically boosted me to level 10 um, after making that choice so then is it possible once I've decided uh, which trade skill I want to be uh, and I've narrowed it down to which profession um, once I finally decided and declared that I'm a sage is it possible for me to later on change my mind can I come back and relearn a different profession the answer is yes so you're gonna have to seek out your trade skill career counselor in uh, Nariac he's right here um, kind of below where this bar area is um, but you can talk to him and what he lets you know is that you will have to um, you know he gives you the options like are you okay you say no I'm not enjoying it you know I want to learn something else um, he will says yes but you will have to forget all your recipes so you will be de-leveled back to level 9 so then you'll have to go at level 9 back to your crafting trainer and repick whether you want to be you know an outfitter a scholar or a tradesman again and then you'll have to level up to 19 and then pick that final profession again as well so if I said yes he would butt me back down to level 10 um, but no thank you I actually am happy with sage so and good day to you too sir
So for the good aligned tunes, your version of all these NPCs and these quests is going to be in the starter zone for New Hallis. So just like we did with Hey Tenby, you want to talk to the Harvest and Collection NPC. So it's this guy here in the remains of the hull of an old Viking ship looks like. So if I talk to him, he'll give me the same quest. He'll ask me if I want to know about collections, about harvesting, and he's going to offer me the same reward. He's going to offer me the storage box. So I'll accept the quest. Thank him for the info. I'll go out and do my harvesting. And when I'm all set with that, I will come over here to the mender. And he, the feather will pop up for him. And he'll give me the same thing. He'll give me the wolf's paw. A recipe, a sack of coal. And then I'll use the anvil as the workstation. Just like I did from my uh, evil line tune. And after I finish doing those uh, very beginner trade skill quests with the mender in the starter zone, I'll make my way over here to Raven's Roost in New Hallis to the crafting area. And just like I did uh, in Nariac, I'll pick up the beginning trade skill quest. I have my trade skill tutorial over here. I have my crafting trainer. Um, after I get to uh, finish that that beginning crafting line, I I will get a mail um, from someone asking me to come to New Hallis to do uh, another crafting line. So. I recommend doing that. It's actually a really fun little line. Um, whether you're evil or you're good aligned, it's the same basic story but from different perspectives. So it's actually really interesting to do. You get a lot of cool recipes um, after doing it because uh, you'll get access to all the advanced stuff. But you'll get a lot of house items too because a lot of those recipes you can make stuff for yourself that will be house items. Uh, when you get to level 15 as a crafter, you'll be able to get work orders, um, and once you get to, to level 20, you'll be able to get the rush orders. But I absolutely do recommend doing the crafting lines um, when you can, and then doing the writs in between. Uh, not only do I think it breaks stuff up and just makes the crafting more fun, but you will get a lot of really cool and useful gear that will help you with stuff like harvesting and crafting. Alright, so now that we've got our crafting tunes underway, we've got the first couple crafting quests under our belt. Uh, once you get to level 20, if you are on the live servers, you can continue doing crafting quests to level yourself up. If you're on the TLE, however, you might have a tougher time as you're going to be very restricted as far as what zones you can go into, what uh, crafting quest lines are going to be available. Um, you just might have to grind it out and just do writs. Like in, in my opinion, that's one of the bigger advantages to actually playing on live, especially if you love crafting like I do or decorating, is that you're just kind of more open and you have more options as far as those things go. But if you guys want like the complete, you know, this is every possible crafting line, trade skill line that I could do, uh, check out the wiki, okay? It has everything listed, and I'm going to put a link down below for that. Um, but if you're interested in, you know, just as a high level tune, what are the most important? What are the essential crafting lines? The things that will give me gear, that will hold me over, and will continue even at 110 to still be important, still be needed. Uh, good luck, actually. Uh, this is... Um, this is a newer tune for me. It's actually a boosted tune as I had that free boost. I actually had a, a crafting boost um, from getting the premium X pack uh, last year. So I went ahead and made her a 100 level crafter. Um, so she's advanced. I, I did the pop line with her, you know, enough to get her to 110. Um, but she doesn't have any re real recipes. She doesn't have any uh, real gear. So I've been going back on my Twitch channel and streaming, doing all the kind of really essential, really important crafting lines, the ones that are going to hold up. So I'm not doing everything. I'm just doing the ones that are going to give me the very, very best gear. So if you guys are interested in following that or seeing my playthroughs, you know, go ahead and, um, 
follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv backslash Catlania. Um, but what I want to do now is talk about a few more things about crafting before we end the video. I want to look at your crafting AA setups and I, I do want to mention before we end um, tinkering, adorning, and transmuting because those are super super important. Um, so real quick on those and I'm gonna head over to uh, one of the crafting cities so that we can can look into what our daily quest for that is. Alright, so when it comes to tinkering, adorning, and transmuting, you definitely want to get all those skills up. Uh, the nice thing about those is they are in addition to your primary trait skill ability, so it doesn't matter what profession you choose, you can be a tinker, you can be an adorner, and you absolutely should get your transmuting maxed up all the way to 550. Um, the benefits of those are just immense. Um, transmuting, what that lets you do is it lets you break down unwanted gear. So all those solos that you run, um, that you have all this gear left over, that you you know you could sell for maybe a couple gold, but why do that when that's actually a treasure trove of fantastic materials for you to make stuff out of? So transmuting will get you uh, powders, it'll get you fragments, um, it will get you infusions, it will get you manas. Manas and infusions, especially in the latest content, in Chaos Ascending, those um, not only do they go for a lot on the broker because they, um, well, they go for a lot on the broker because they make some really awesome things. So they'll make adornments. Um, and we all need, um, if you want to get the best adornments in game, uh, you want to get the four orange adornments, the level seven, rune of glory, championship, witness, juxtaposition. Those each take a hundred celestial infusions. So that's why they're so expensive because we need so many of them. Um, same thing with the manas. It'll get you the celestial adornments. So you do need to be 550 though. Um, but if you're making your own components, then that is going to to make those items much less expensive than if you have to say commission them or buy them off the broker. Uh, the other thing too is uh, you want to make sure that you get your tinkering up. If nothing else, you want to at least be 350 on your tinkering so you can make your own repair bot. So it's this guy right here, the Mechanized Platinum Repository of Reconstruction. Um, so if you want to, you know, run groups with people, if you want to um, do heroics then absolutely bring your own repair bot. Um, most people that have been playing for any length of time will have their own, but there is a really long cooldown time on these guys, about 15 minutes. So if your group is having a rough time, uh, help out, bring the repair bot with you. And of course, there are just a ton of other really helpful, really useful stuff that you can get from tinkering, um, not only for the adventure side, but for the crafting side of things. So. How then do you start tinkering, um, adorning, transmuting, and how to level it up? Well, all your major crafting cities are going to have this NPC, Londer Inged. So same name, same NPC, different cities. So he is your daily adorning and tinkering guy. So he will give you a quest every single day, and it's the daily adorning, the daily transmuting, it's the all-purpose sprockets quest. So you get that from him, he is going to give you three boxes of materials. So you're going to want to find a workstation. Now I've already got started on this, so but I'm going to show you guys. Um, so he gives you these boots to transmute. Okay, and this is really easy, is that in your ability page from your knowledge book, right? So if I go here, I go to abilities, you're going to find the ability to mute stuff. So it's this guy right here. Now I like to put this on a hotbar just so it's nice and easy to get to. But if I have this, all I do is click it, right, just like a spell. And then I hover over the item that I want to transmute. Click that, hit OK, and voila, it's going to give me a fragment. So, and then I just continue, I just do this. For him, he's going to give you 10 boots, and you're going to have to make 10 adornments, and you're going to have to make 10 sprockets when you tinker stuff. Um, 
But there you go. I've finished Lander's quest for the day, and I've increased my transmuting skill. Um, usually it's a one per item is what you go up as, but it might be a little bit less as you get higher up. Um, but if I do this every single day, then it's not very long till I get to, to max level. And of course, uh, I'm going to make... He always has you make the same items. Like the quest will scale to you as you gain more and more. But if I want to do the tinkering one, it's the sprocket. Hey, it's going to give me the all purpose sprocket. All I have to do is create that. So treat this like you do any other crafting item. Your one, two, three is going to be linked to your durability bar. And if you have a counter, you need to make sure you click that quickly. If not, it's gonna affect you. Um, it'll probably lose durability. Your tune will get a nice little smack. Um, and four, five, six then is for your progress. So I would just keep doing um, sprockets until I got to 10 of those guys to complete the quest. Now for the adornments, it's the adornment of guarding. And again, you will need to do 10 of those. So I can do progress, four, five, six, make it go faster. But I do have to watch out for any of those counters and make sure I click that and don't click the wrong one because that's also going to hurt you as well. Okay, and all done. Okay, so I would still need to do a few more adornments, a few more sprockets, but once I'm done with the quest, like I finished with the muting, I come back to Londair, and he says, have you finished? I said, yes, here you go. And he's going to award me city tokens, which then I, of course, can go spend at the monthly city festivals. Now, if this is too slow, are there other ways to get going with your transmuting or with your adornment or your tinkering? Absolutely. You can get the recipes. You can start making adornments. You can start making your own tinkered items. Um, however, those will burn through a ton of mats. So same thing with transmuting. Um, but if you guys really do want to do this and you are motivated, um, I'd say go hit some old raid zones. Go hit some old heroics, especially if this is a higher level to trying to catch up with crafting and the tinkering and the transmuting, is that you'll get just a ton of old gear from doing those zones and just go ahead and transmute them. Go ahead and turn that those uh, products into adornments. Um, and go ahead and tinker some items. A lot of them are really useful and they'll help you out anyway, or you can always sell them on the broker. As promised, let's go ahead and look at those trade skill AA specs that we have. So I'm gonna hit my alternate advancement button to pull everything up. Now, normally you'll land on this character development page, um, but you can go down to one of the other buttons. Trade skill is a good one. You'll see in the upper right-hand corner here, we have all our different AA specs. And what you'll notice is I have my basic AA spec, but I also have two other ones. I have one for experimentation. I have one for mass production. So why do I have so many? Well, because you have to make decisions, right? You only are gonna be allowed to put so many points and so many things. And there's a lot of useful stuff when it comes to trade scaling. So I actually have three different setups. I have the one that complements my adventuring spec and the one that I'm in 99% of the time, but I also have one for experimentation. So this is where, especially in a lot of the newer zones, uh, you're trying to get to that uh, make that transition from solo to heroics and the way to do that is master crafted gear but master crafted gear just in its basic form isn't really good enough is that you need to do a lot of things to it use refined goods you need to infuse it but you also need to experiment on it so I'm gonna have a setup because experimenting is kind of tough that is one is going to let me experiment, but two, give me every possible advantage, every possible boost, give me every extra skill point I can get when it comes to experimenting. And then lastly, I'm going to have a mass production spec. So 
This is especially helpful um, if you're in one of those professions that makes consumables like uh, provisioners or this tune's a woodworker, so like for making arrows or an alchemist with making potions where you're going to sell like big batches of stuff where someone's going to buy a big stack and it's so much easier to just make 500 food or 500 drink instead of making like six, six, six or however many it lets you make. So absolutely useful but you aren't going to be in that spec a lot of the time so let's go over my basic one the one that complements my adventuring so I had to think about well what skills is it that I use the most and that I'll use when I'm out and about in the world when I'm doing my adventure lines when I'm doing my crafting lines um, what are the things that are going to help me the most and number one on that list is harvesting right so the most out of my harvesting skills, the most out of my chance of finding rares. Um, that's what I want to complement my adventure skill. But the other thing that I want too is, you know, sometimes if I'm running heroics and I'm with a group, is that you're going to get downtime, right? What do a lot of people do in the downtime? Well, of course, you know, we goof off and we talk and we have fun, but a lot of times too is that we will transmute, we will salvage like the gear that we've gotten from that zone that maybe we don't really want. Um, that we're not going to use, but we've won it. So we'll salvage that so that we can then later turn it into more useful things. And that's what we'll use that downtime for. So I want stuff that's going to complement those things that I do most of the time. So looking at like the first tab here for trade skill, what you'll notice is you actually get 40 points to put in this page out of 45 possible. So this page you're going to be able to get almost everything. And it's not going to differ that much depending on which AA spec for trade skills I'm going to be in. Um, you just want to make sure that when it comes to your normal spec, your your harvest spec that goes along with your adventure one, is that you max out points in ample harvest because that is going to increase your harvest skill as well as your trim reaver which is going to increase your chance of rares. Right? And then you can I would also say you definitely want to put in, make sure you get 5 out of 5 in conservation of mass. Um, what that does, and this is super helpful, is that it gives you a chance to get your mats back from your combines. Okay? So, and I know, you know, oh, is it really that big of a deal if I get back a couple roots or a couple pelts? Um, probably not for those things, but if you're making anything that requires a rare, wouldn't you like a chance to get that rare back? If you are maybe making an ascension spell that needed a scroll, or maybe you're grand mastering a spell that you needed a master before, like how awesome would it be to have a chance to get those back, right? And of course, if you've done the What Dreams May Come quest line and you have the Coldane the cold Prayer Shawl, then you'll also increase the chance of getting stuff back, just like um, with this conservation of mass. So, you know, absolutely spec for that. Right, and then when it comes to your other line, your other profiles here, with experimentation, with mass production, um, you can, I, I would say you don't really need to have as many points in Apple Harvest or Trim Reaver, so go ahead and make sure everything else is maxed out on, on those two different profiles. Okay, so then what are the other things that really make a bigger difference for Trade Skill? It's this Trade Skill Prestige tab. Okay, so you're going to get your first one, which is going to be general. You're going to get a Far Seas one. Um, so looking at what is best for my everyday stuff, what's best for my harvest skill, I'm going to focus on this column right here. Right. So with this column, and same thing with these guys, is you have to put uh, at least 15 points up top, or in the case of this guy, you know, you have to max this out um, to get down to this bottom one. So the bottom one here is going to be refining, right? Now, why do we like refining? Well, what you do is you take a rare item that you got and you refine it. And it, it doesn't always give you a 100% chance of refining. Sometimes you may just get the slag or the byproduct. Um, so that's why we're going to want to, in our next page, make sure that we increase our chances of refining and make it as high as possible. But what that does then is you need to take that refined rare and you can use that to make your master crafted gear. You'll actually get more stats out of that item than if you had just used the basic rare and not refined it. So it adds up, especially when you do it for all of them. So you absolutely want to have that. With salvaging, I'll actually show you guys how to salvage. So I've made a couple items here 
to salvage. Now, uh, it's this little hand looking icon. So if I click that and I mouse over and I click this guy, what does this give me? Well, it's going to give me salvage celestial infuser fragments. So what do I do with those? I use those to make infusers, things that are going to infuse my gear with either more crit bonus, with more potency, with more stamina, um, more ability mod. So these are all really awesome things to have and the player made ones, the ones that you make yourself for infusers are generally guaranteed, right? Whereas the ones that drop from zones are, are, are a chance of adding more potency or whatever to an item, uh, these ones are generally guaranteed. So these are the quality, the best of the best infusers. And it does take quite a few of these fragments um, to make one infuser. So you're going to want to do this. This is, this is very, very helpful. So I absolutely want to have that skill and I want to have it maxed to the rank of five. Um, if you don't have it all the way to five, it makes for a really long cooldown time in between your salvages, which not very useful, right? If you have to wait 45 minutes to salvage something, you know, why have it spec? Just, just make sure you get five out of five. Um, and I'm kind of working backwards here. Um, another really, really important thing that you want to make sure that you get are these workstations. So being able to summon crafting workstations. So this can be absolutely helpful. So if you are running one of those quests, um, one of those uh, trade skill quests, and your NPC wants you to make something, but there's no crafting stations anywhere near you, how much easier, how wonderful would it be just to be able to summon one at the drop of a hat. So I have them here since this, this tune I use pretty much only for crafting. I'm, I have them on her hotbar, but they do come in like your abilities book is that I can just summon a chemistry table out of the blue. I could summon a workbench out of the blue. So anything I need to do for any crafting quest, I don't need to run back to my guild or to my home city or to the nearest crafting station. I can do it. And it's all from doing this AA spec. Now, you can get tinkered portable crafting stations. So if you don't have enough AAs yet, if you're still a lower level tune and you're working up, uh, you absolutely can buy the tinkered ones from a tinker or off the broker. And they're usually not too expensive. They're usually only a couple gold each. Uh, the other thing I want to make sure I get is the gardening, the gathering goblin, right? So again, he's just like your pack pony, right? He'll go out and he'll harvest for you. And he does give you a lot more attitude than the pack pony does. Uh, but you actually will get a chance in the Kunark Ascending trade skill line to trade him in or, you know, according to the storyline, set him free um, in exchange for uh, a house plant that gives you harvest daily. So, and that house plant actually gives you stuff from the KA. It gives you stuff from Planes of Prophecy, stuff from uh, cast ascending so and those are things that those are zones where your pack pony and your guild harvesters and your gathering gather basically refuse to give you any mats for so it is worth it especially at the beginning of an expansion and especially if you have multiple tunes that all have it so it actually adds up it's a good thing to have and don't worry like even after you give away your your gathering goblin here um, instead of becoming the actual goblin to pull up he becomes a buff so he gives you a trade skill crafting harvesting buff that actually um, makes you harvest really really fast so it, and it's really useful and I always notice when it wears off right or if it gets um, if I get debuffed because I went and did something that took it off like I always notice right away like why am I harvesting so slow it's because my, my gathering goblin buff wore off and of course the very first thing to get this started is your season harvest ability which gives you five percent more chance to get rares so we already got a one percent chance on our trade skill page this is five more and there's actually one more thing that we can spec for in our aas that will get us all the way up to an extra seven percent chance of getting a rare harvest uh, now once you finish this you are going to have a couple points left over so i did put it in over here which increases your mount speed so not really helping my crafting, but again, this is uh, to supplement my adventuring since this is the, the spec that I'm in when I'm adventuring. So I will take some extra speed on that. And then my last page here is going to be my Farsi's tab. So 
I've already decided that this is where I'm really focusing on salvaging and muting and things like that on my harvest. So I'm going to pick all the things that will help me with that. So things like increasing my refining ability, increasing my salvage chance, um, this little guy over here, the experience reaping, this get, increases my harvest. Um, and of course, the one that you have to put a point in regardless of what you're trying to spec for here, the one that kicks off uh, this whole tree is your harvest technique, which gives you that other 1% uh, chance of rares. So, and then I just used my extra um, points left over to add to my tinkering and my dorning, as well as kind of boosting my primary profession. I don't really care so much about these guys at the bottom since it's about making you craft faster or helping your experimenting. Okay, so that is my basic setup for my harvest that kind of complements and supplements my adventure line. But if I want to then do something for experimenting, again, this page here, it's not going to be that much different um, than the original one. I'm just not going to um, worry about specking for harvest stuff. So my trade skill line, instead of hitting this far left, um, column, I am going to focus on the center one because at the very, very bottom, this is what gives me the ability to experiment. And you'll notice that it's a rank five out of five. You can experiment on the same item up to five times, but you need to have this maxed out to five, right? If you only put three AA points in here, it will only let you experiment on an item three times. If you only put one point, it will only let you experiment once. So you do have to get all the way to the bottom, which means you do have to put at least 15 into this this column. And not all of these in this column are very helpful as far as experimenting go, because again, you'll see I put five points into, into speed of my mounts, and that's because this other one is like about the duration of food and drink. Most of the actual crafting stuff that's going to help you is this column over here, but you do want to get down to the bottom, so you got to put it someplace, right? Okay, and then my, my far seas tab so I'm not going to bother putting stuff into refining or salvaging um, because I don't, you know, I'm not specced for that in this profile, but I am going to put it into stuff that is going to help me with my crafting abilities. And the important thing here too is that you need to put at least 20 up top to get down to these bottom two. And what I really, really want out of this page as far as experimenting goes is to get this seasoned experimentation because this is going to help me with that. All right, so then my last profile is going to be my mass production one. And again, this gives you the ability, when you have the spec, you can make anything from one of an item to a hundred of item and anything in between. So if you want to make two, if you want to make 22, um, it makes things go so much faster, um, especially important with those consumable professions. But even if you're just doing a couple spells and maybe you wanna make three of them, it can still be helpful. So I want to get down to the very bottom here so I get the ability to mass produce stuff. And I do want to get five out of five of those. And because all of these guys in this column are all helping my my crafting progress and success chances, I'm going to max all of them out. And when it comes to the first seas one, again, I need to kick off this harvest technique to get points down here. Um, but I am going to want to get down to the swift crafting at the bottom. I'm going to want to put all these points into to the important stuff. And I'm going to put points into as well as helping my primary crafting profession, but my alternate crafting professions. Now, what I want to do though to end the video is I do want to show you guys a little bit about how to work on these uh, crafting AAs. So you're putting points in say, and you decide, oh, oops, I didn't want to put one in that spot, or I've changed my mind, I want to actually put it someplace different, so how do I backtrack? Like, how do I roll this stuff back? Okay, so all I need to do is, because if I click on this stuff, it's not going to do anything, right? And the, f I do want to make sure I'm in the right mode, because right now if I click on stuff, nothing's going to happen. It's because I am not in the build mode. Right, so what I need to do is click on this. It looks like the unfurled scroll. I'm gonna click on this button and it's gonna put me into the build mode. So I can actually make changes. Now, how do I roll stuff back? How do I remove points? Um, clicking on the screen itself isn't gonna do anything. You need to click on this column back here. And this shows you like the order that you started giving points in and it will show for this entire tab, right? So it shows stuff that I put into general as well as the far C's tab. So if I were to click on this guy, I would roll back all the points for both of these tabs. If I wanna just do the last stuff that I looked at, like for this page was last, then I'll go back to here. So 
I click on this and it's going to give me the option to remove or roll back which uh, since it's the last thing I put in it doesn't really make a difference right so I can remove that and then it'll take me down to five when it was six if I want to go back even further I can go back here right like if I wanted to roll back this guy so I could roll back to right there because do I really need a point in experimentation if I'm not spec in this mode no I don't so I may as well take that point and put it all in here all right, so, and there I am, I maxed out, I've got 25 out of 25, I've got zero unassigned points, so I'm going to want to save this. So, and it's gonna ask me to rename it. Um, I don't need to actually change the name if I wanna keep it on the same thing. But if it, I always do something really descriptive here, just so I know um, what mold it is, or what, or pro, what profile it is. All right. So I am all set then. And if I wanted to, I'm not currently in mass production, but if I wanted to switch from the current one that I'm in, you'll see that I'm in my adventure mode, which is why this commit button's grayed out, it's because I'm already in it. If I wanted to switch back and forth between say, uh, mass production and my adventure, then it lights up red, it'll let me commit it. And I would just click that, it would reset me. Um, it will take off all your buffs, it will like dismount you. So you're gonna have to put that back on if you need that. But real easy to switch back and forth. All right, so I hope this helps. Hope this answers a lot of you guys' questions about crafting from the most basic stuff to kind of the more advanced things. Thanks for watching, guys.